Hi everybody, Dr. Ellie Stein here. This video tip of the month is something a little bit different. If you follow me, you may have never heard me before talk about supplements. The reason is because although many people swear by them, they haven't been game changers for me personally. And the scientific literature looking at the effectiveness of various supplements in the complex chronic diseases has been inconclusive. So you can imagine my surprise when I tried a new supplement, because I've tried a gazillion, and it's actually helping. When something works for me, I want to spread the word and get feedback from others to see if you've tried it and if it's helping you. So in this video, I'm going to introduce you to a supplement that is called hydrogen gas or hydrogen rich water. I'm going to tell you what hydrogen gas is, why most of us are deficient, don't have enough, what are the health benefits of supplementing with hydrogen gas, and how to do it. In a separate video, I'm gonna share my personal experience with taking a hydrogen rich water supplement. So check that out. And I, if you want to read the references and know where I got the material that I'm sharing in this video, please go to the sister blog on my website. Just go to my blog page, type in the word hydrogen and it should pop right up. So I'm going to start with what is molecular hydrogen and why is it so critical for our health? Many of you know that atomic hydrogen, H, is the smallest element in existence and it's got a number one on the periodic table. Hydrogen gas, called H2, is what is formed when two hydrogens come together and covalently share a pair of electrons. And when you see an image of it in a textbook, it looks like a set of dumbbells, right? You've got the two H's and you've got the bond in the middle. Hydrogen gas was the first gas to form in the universe. And as a result, all creatures, including us, evolved in a close relationship with hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas is a colorless, tasteless, odorless, neutrally charged gas. Because it's so tiny, it's very diffusible. So if you get it into the body, it can quickly and easily diffuse through membranes without using any energy and penetrate all compartments of the body. A couple notes, hydrogen gas is totally different than hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions are what form many of the molecules that make up our body, and I'm going to talk about some of them in a moment. Whereas billions of years ago, when life on Earth started forming, hydrogen was the dominant gas in the atmosphere. Now it's the tiniest sliver. Hydrogen is only makes up 0.00005% of our atmosphere. So that being the case, and given that we need hydrogen, where do we get it from? Two main sources. One is our food. So every molecule of food, whether it's fat, protein, or carbohydrate, contains hydrogen ions. These hydrogens are integral to our ability to make energy. In fact, H+, the hydrogen ion, actually drives the ATP synthase nanomotor that allows us to produce energy. So it is in the room where it happened. It's very central. A second potentially large source of hydrogen is the gas created by the bacteria that live in our bowel. They create hydrogen gas when they ferment and metabolize fiber that we can't digest. So you might say, okay, we get it from our food, we get it from our microbiome, so what's the problem? The problem is that carbohydrates have a higher than average ratio of a hydrogen isotope called deuterium. Deuterium has a proton and a neutron, and it's much heavier than proteum, the type of hydrogen I'm talking about. When deuterium gets in to the ATPase nanomotors in our mitochondria, it can actually break them. So as our modern lifestyle has evolved and we're eating 
more carbohydrates and less protein and fat, we're actually able to produce less energy as a result. If we eat processed food, we don't get enough fiber, we starve our microbiome and they're unable to provide the amount of hydrogen gas that we need. So these are two reasons why most humans are deficient in hydrogen. So this leads to the next question, what does hydrogen do for us anyway? I've already mentioned uh, one important aspect, it drives uh, the production of ATP, that's a pretty big one. But it's also central in the balance between oxidation and reduction. And this balance called redox basically is the master controller of everything that happens in our body, including the stress response. Now, hydrogen gas is considered a smart molecule. What this means is that unlike antioxidant supplements, hydrogen gas will never decrease oxidative stress below the optimal balance point, something we call homeostasis. So it's never gonna put us out of balance, it's only gonna bring us closer to balance. Research shows that people in good health, for example, Japanese centenarians, have higher than average levels of hydrogen gas in their bodies. And conversely, people with a host of chronic diseases, including things like metabolic syndrome and Parkinson's disease, have lower levels of hydrogen. So there's um, correlation evidence that hydrogen gas is uh, important for human health. Okay, but this is at a submolecular level. Hydrogen regulates redox and the stress response, and we can't really see or feel that directly. So what can we notice? Some of the beneficial effects of hydrogen gas therapy found in research include decreasing low-grade inflammation associated with chronic disease, some of you know what inflammaging is, the increase in low-grade inflammation that occurs with age, decreasing oxidative stress caused by free radicals. This one really got my attention, decreasing cellular stress caused by exposure to chemical toxins, which we all experience, and increasing energy production of the mitochondria. So these are research study proven effects of hydrogen gas therapy. How do we notice it? So there's been over a hundred studies involving humans and they show things like increased exercise performance and capacity, improved brain metabolism and cognitive function and decrease in fatty liver and improvement on lab results in people with uh, fatty liver disease and diabetes. So it seems to have some pretty far-reaching effects. How can we get more hydrogen in our bodies? It's actually not that easy. So probably the most commonly used method, there, there's many, and in my blog, I share some more of them, but the commonly used the most commonly used method is something called hydrogen rich water in which we dissolve hydrogen in water and then we drink the water. Now what's really important to know is the hydrogen doesn't interact with the water or change the structure or function of the water in any way. Just like when you dissolve salt in water, it's just along for the ride. We cannot get hydrogen or oxygen gas from regular water without uh, using electrolysis to create it because of how tightly water molecules are bound. When we drink hydrogen rich water, because the H2 molecules, hydrogen gas is so tiny and neutrally charged, it's able to disperse through the entire body through all membranes without the need for transporters. This makes it uh, easier than kind of anything else I can think of to get it to where it's needed. So once it gets to the body, if it encounters a free radical, free radicals have a strong negative charge from their free electron. That charge pries apart the two uh, parts, the two hydrogen molecules in the H2 gas, and each of them donates an electron to neutralize a free radical. 
This is how it works. And because it takes a little bit of effort to pry apart those two hydrogens, only the strongest and most dangerous free radicals like the hydroxyl radical can achieve this. So one reason hydrogen gas is so safe, again to repeat, is it doesn't push our redox out of balance. Okay, a $64,000 question, how do you get the gas in the water? So there are many methods, but the most common and the least expensive is to purchase pure elemental magnesium tablets. You put them in water, they make hydrogen gas bubbles, and you drink it. Why am I recommending this form? Because they're small and inexpensive to ship, and in an unopened, untampered package, they can actually last a couple of years, right? So they have a shelf life. There's also companies selling hydrogen water that's pre-made in containers, but hydrogen easily diffuses through plastic. So you have to have like high-end fancy containers. And even then, pre-made water has a short half-life and it's heavy and therefore expensive to ship. So you've got these uh, pure elemental magnesium tablets. When you drop them in water, there's a reaction. You can check it out in my blog and it produces hydrogen gas. Now, a really important note is that the hydrogen, uh, sorry, the magnesium supplements with which you may be familiar, like magnesium glycinate, magnesium citrate, et cetera, do not make hydrogen gas. They have ionic magnesium, not elemental magnesium, and those are two totally different molecules. So the regular magnesium supplements that you're already taking may be helpful for you, but they won't help in this way. So what do you actually do? You put a tablet in 500 mils, that's about 16 ounces of room temperature water. The purer and cleaner the water, the better. You take it on an empty stomach. The dose that seems to equate with the most clinical benefits, like the studies that I've mentioned to you of exercise and cognitive function and liver uh, improvement in liver function and diabetes, most of those studies use the equivalent of two tablets a day. Uh, so generally, you would take them before you eat in the morning, sometime later in the day, at least two hours after eating. If you're having a very more stressful or demanding day, you could take more tablets. Why? Because believe it or not, in all of the animal and human studies done to date, no side effects have been noted. Now, I do not expect you to believe me. This sounds like a very big claim. So I would direct you to the website of the Molecular Hydrogen Institute. That is the organization of scientists who study hydrogen gas and you can learn there from the experts. On October 16th, 2024, I am hosting or did host, depending when you're listening to this, a webinar with one of those experts, the inventor and patent holder for the molecular hydrogen tablets. His name is Alex Tarnava. You can also easily find him online. If it's not the 16th yet and you want to attend the free webinar, Go to my webpage, click on upcoming events, and scroll down until you find it. You can register there and you'll get emails with the link. If you're watching this after uh, October 16th, giving us a few days to get it ready, the recording will be posted on my YouTube channel. You can view it at, at Dr. Eleanor Stein. I hope this information is helpful to you, and I would love to hear your feedback. If you already use molecular hydrogen, or if you try it, let me know how it works for you.